And this week we're talking about Bulma because she broke the internet similar to Kim Kardashian this week um, <laughs> because of a one second clip that was revealed in a 15 second trailer. Um, but more specifically, we're talking about her use of the Dragon Balls. So we'll get back to that one second clip and uh, I'm sure we will in a short while. But uh, <laughs> the, main, the main topic of discussion is... Does she abuse the Dragon Balls? Uh, are her wishes <laughs> too far fetched? And how does that relate to that one second clip? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, what do you think? She's made, what, like five, six wishes over the course of all three series, um, not including any potential wishes she's made in future manga arcs, but from Dragon Ball Z and Super. Um, she's made like six wishes i think it's it's even even her intent on her wishes is 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 Questionable. Worth, yeah it's everything that everything that we see from dragon team and everything like that we're always seeing like revive everybody who's died and everything like that and and bring back the people who've across everyone who died throughout the freezer arc and everyone mm. who died on Namek and um, bring back Krillin because he died to Demon King Piccolo's uh, minions. And, and then you have Bulma because she wanted a lifetime supply of strawberries. Or she yeah. wanted a perfect boyfriend. <laughs> or she wants to be five years younger. It's, <sighs> it's, it's not something that should be done. Yeah. And the thing is, these Dragon Balls have a cool down. <laughs> yeah, you've got to wait a whole year. It's like, <laughs> hmm, I could solve world hunger. Oh, I could solve my hunger of strawberries. <laughs> ah, what to do? Yeah, she's, she's pretty selfish with them. Especially with the fact that she just constantly uh, searches for them. Or get someone else to get them as soon as she uses them, so then they're hers, ready for the next time. Um, which is kind of understandable because let's face it, I don't think. Well, it's the Dragon Balls aren't a a well known thing. I think yes, the Dragon Team knows about them. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> like surely someone has seen a random dragon in the sky at some point and wondered what the hell is that. <laughs> um, imagine the conspiracy theorist of the Dragon Ball universe <laughs> like, having their podcast like did you see that dragon in the sky <laughs> like oh my god big, what was big foot the yeah. Dragon. <laughs> yeah. but yeah there's got to be people who have seen flying orbs across the sky or dragons or why did the sun leave for like 20 <laughs> minutes um, that type of thing but yeah all of her wishes are questionable um, and selfish <laughs> Yeah. 100% selfish. I mean, the only one that was arguably wasn't was the wishing for the mineral um, so that they could utilize the time machine um, in Dragon Ball Super mm -hmm. um, so that they could go fight Zamasu mm -hmm. in Trunks's timeline. Mm -hmm. And even then, while it's not technically selfish, it's should they have done it? I mean, yeah, it's, it's more the, the ethical side of it. Going into that timeline only introduces yourself to Goku Black, who once they went there, all Goku Black did was follow them into the new timeline, yeah. follow them back. So now Goku Black now knows about two timelines. Mm. So when he was finished in Trunks' timeline, he was just going to come join that timeline and destroy another one. So... Basically, what Bayush and Reese were saying is arguably correct that don't mess with things. Like, <laughs> yeah. So the intentions were good to defeat the Amazon, and it does make sense. I, we get why our heroes helped mm. Trunk, but there is a fair point to say that really... Should have kind of left them. Should have just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you're putting the fate of the entire universe at risk just to help out someone who is fine in your universe. He is a different version of your son and you're helping him out just because he asked for help 
Like, yes, fair enough. He is your son, kind of, a different version at least, and you might feel sorry for him. But also, you're putting not only his universe, but your own universe at risk just by trying to help him out. And if things go bad, like imagine if Goku and Vegeta went over there and they couldn't defeat Goku Black, then their universe is left without the two strongest warriors to defend it. And who knows what Goku Black would have done if he managed to come back across. Yeah, so kind of selfish. Like, yes, it was for a good cause to help, but the damage that could have been caused because yeah. of it was massive. Yeah, it's the, it's the ethical side of it as of should it have been done. So mm. whilst it's probably the most practical thing she's put it to it, it's it's probably the most questionable. Yeah. So whilst it wasn't directly in her interest, really, she kind of just probably did it. I mean, mm. if you look at all the ways she was doing it, when she was making that time machine, she kind of, a lot of her wanted to do it just because she wanted to make the time machine. Mm. <laughs> if you think about the way she was doing it, she was just obsessed with the fact that she was a genius and she could make a time machine. Yeah. Um, she was impressed with herself from another time and she wanted to do it. Mm. Um, so it's either ethics or selfishness for the most point. She's, she's <laughs> never really just done something good. No. I mean, I mean, there's even the, um, when she collected the Dragon Balls to bingo prize them off as well. Yeah, like... I actually just remembered that one as we... Uh, <laughs> imagine as we if like, you're given away a wish from a wish grant and dragon. And yes, I get it. The Dragon Balls are cool. <laughs> they can grant anything you want. But given that amount of power, even to a friend... Even to someone you trust fully, completely, they could do anything they want and benefit or impact the world because of it. Like if if Android 18 won them, for example, she would probably be selfish enough to wish for unlimited money, which is fine. But also, in the grand scheme of things, how much does unlimited money affect the world economics <laughs> of Dragon Ball? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stuff like that. Like, yes, she would benefit her family, of course, but I don't know. Who else could have won? Emperor Pilaf, potentially? I guess the, the Pilaf gang were around for the bingo. If one of them won, what would they have done with the Dragon Balls? That type of thing. You seen what they did with them in GT? They wished Goku to be young again. Was that a good idea? Probably not. They could have wished for something better, but still, what if they did that again? What if they wish for Goku to be 2,000 years old, uh, older than Master Roshi, and then he's just frail constantly? <laughs> and he just keels over and dies. <laughs> yeah, I wish for anything. <laughs> wish to be the actual Emperor of the Earth. Uh, unkillable, that type of stuff, you know? It's things that some villains have tried and some have succeeded at doing before. Like, uh. it's just, I, I think that's, regardless of what you think of of GT because I know it's very controversial. Mm. GT, I think they that is one thing they arguably got right is mm. the abuse of the Dragon Balls mm. should come with some type of consequence. Yeah, and I think I think the the ethos around that was good. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think that there's a good idea behind that. The execution is. A different discussion to be had mm. but i don't think there's anything wrong and i think there is definitely an idea about the fact that there should be consequences about abuse there should be judgment when it comes to your wishes mm -hmm. uh, maybe around the virtue of your wish um or maybe even shenron should deem whether or not it's a it's a worthy wish mm. um because I know Shenron can judge the discretion of your wish, yeah. and he can, he can deny it if he if he wishes. Um, he doesn't because he he can give you warnings based on whether or not he doesn't just have to go okay. Like he has discretion to mm -hmm. agree if if he if you wish someone back to life, for instance, and they're just immediately going to die again, he will say like, "This is going to happen. Do you not want to do this instead?" Mm. A lot of the wishes are at Shenron's discretion. Um, so I think there are obviously factors that can be taken into account, and I think there should be more give with that. But yeah. I think 
maybe they should put more credence, give more credence to Shenron, so we can basically look at someone like Bulma and just say, "Be gone." <laughs> <laughs> It makes me wonder, because especially in Super, where there's a, a little bit of a time skip, at least. Um, you know, Bulma has collected the Dragon Balls as a prize. But how often? Like, it seems like she's constantly collecting the Dragon Balls to have them. And how many wishes have we not seen? Or how many wishes do they not talk about? Has Bulma secretly wished to be the smartest woman in the world? And that's how she can create all of these things? Because yes, her dad's also a scientist and also extremely smart and things like that. But did she wish to also be smart? Obviously, she's probably inherited some genes and she, but you never see her study because did she go to school? You never see that in Dragon Ball. She's with the gang the entire time. Um, but she is super smart. She does create all of these uh, gadgets, like the, all the capsules and all the things that they use throughout the journeys and stuff, the dragon radar, the time machines, all that type of stuff. As she secretly wished to be super smart at some point and no one's known. Because there's only a year cooldown. If the Earth is fine for a year, I'm sure she could spare a wish and just not tell anyone and then recollect the Dragon Balls. <laughs> um, you know, she could easy be wishing for all this stuff. Like she wished to be five years younger, like you mentioned earlier. And it's like such a pointless wish that doesn't matter at all that is literally just affecting what her looks slightly and she can probably live a bit longer because of it as well but it's a pointless wish and how many other pointless wishes does she really want to do she could end world hunger she could end global warming in the dragon ball universe if there is global warming probably with all these energy blasts there will be say even worse energy is. global warming <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, you know, save species or do whatever, uh, you know, so many different things. I mean, you know it's a bad wish when you've got even Goku calling you out on it. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> but I think I think the, the biggest thing is, like, she's locked, when she does make these wishes, she locks up the Dragon Balls for a year. Mm. And what if a big bad comes and they desperately need a wish during that time? And she's literally just used them the day before. Mm. And they need that wish for something. Yeah. Like, imagine imagine she'd made that wish, and then the next day, Beerus turned up wanting the Super Saiyan God, and they wanted to ask Shenron about how to get access to the Super Saiyan God. Yeah. Couldn't and happen. Shenron to ask, yeah, right, it, Beerus would have probably just destroyed the world. Yeah, it's as simple as that. There would have been no Shenron to ask because Shenron had the answer. Yeah. He was the only person. And they couldn't force him to come out. Like mm -hmm. he was he was rocks. And that was it. Yeah. Doesn't matter how afraid Shenron is of him, he's rocks. <laughs> yeah, I guess the only other thing they could have done is go find other Namekians again. Go back to the planet that they put them on. I don't know. Did they just end up naming it New Namek? I think they did. Um, they would have went back to New Namek and tried to get the Dragon Balls there because, you know, all Namekians have the ability to create Dragon Balls so we just need to find a Namekian to make new ones so that could have been a thing but how long would it have taken to go to New Namek and make these Dragon Balls and get an answer to this question Beerus probably wouldn't have waited that long I was going to say, does Beerus have the patience for that? Definitely not <laughs> he, would have blew, he would have blew up Earth and worried about the consequences later. Exactly, yeah. Even if all the Saiyans that he required were on that planet, wouldn't have cared. Exactly, yeah. He would have just been annoyed mm. and then kicked off at Whis afterwards, and that would have been it. Yeah. Like, and that would have literally been all Bulma's fault <laughs> mm. because like, of a stupid wish. <laughs> they spent years bringing people back to life as well, like when they brought Krill and Yamcha and Tien back to life. Um, because they had to wait a year in between and then they were going to do it for Goku and he was like, no, just keep me dead for a while. Like, All right. Um, but that took a few years to do alone because they had to wait a year every time. Um, it's just like anything could happen. Imagine if the Boo arc started right after the Cell arc, you know, and they were wishing. Yeah. Yeah, and they were wishing all these things instead of having like a however long time skip, like seven, eight years or whatever for Gohan to get older. And the Buarch started straight away. 
no one's around because everyone's dead, that type of thing. Like, yeah, there would have been no wishes. Things would have been weird. But uh, I guess this is where it comes onto that one second clip, at least, anyway, because there was a lot of stuff going around. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was a mini hoax um, where people believed that uh, Bulma used the Dragon Balls again. And I wish this time was just to, you know, have a bit of a dumpy, you know? <laughs> and uh, there was that one second clip that broke the internet. Because, yeah, the animators got a bit uh, too full of Carried themselves. Away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> full fan service. And, yeah, she seems to have grown a bit in certain areas. Let's just put it that way. Um, it was like everyone, like, there were about 20 people who were like, oh, my God, freeze it. And then literally every other screenshot and every other comment was just bull, man. It was yeah. Like, it's like yeah. <laughs> Freezer hasn't been announced for this film at all. No one expected him to be in it. And then he's revealed in this one second clip. But then also, wait, Bulma's got what now? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, who cares about Frieza, the most popular villain in Dragon Ball, when Bulma now has, you know, bigger okay. things. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. The power of horny teenagers. Unnecessary animation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that as well. <laughs> but yeah, there was that thing where, well, uh, mini hoax where. It was like that's she wished for it with the Dragon Balls. And to be honest, it's believable, which is why people fell for it. Because it is believable, because of all of her previous wishes and things that she's done. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. But And they've they've slightly they've been slightly more adult with the like the language and stuff like that and super mm. and the jokes. So to be honest, it's not wholly unbelievable. Yeah. It's in, completely plausible. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so it wouldn't be like I just I wouldn't be a hundred percent surprised if it had been, especially anything. Yeah, especially because if it, the film will probably start straight away with a time skip because everyone's older now. You know, Go, uh, Goten and Trunks are teenagers now, so there's been some sort of time skip, and she could the film could start similarly to how Battle of Gods did, where she's gathered the Dragon Balls and everything is all peaceful. Because that's how the films usually start. Everything's peaceful, something bad happens, and then there's a fight, and then it ends. Um, but yeah, things could be peaceful. She uses the Dragon Balls to have a wish or whatever. It's believable. Although, I really hope the Dragon Balls just aren't used in the film, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't... I, I've, I'm past the Dragon Balls being used. Because every time that I have pointless wishes... Or they're to bring someone back to life. And that's the only two things that ever happen with the Dragon Balls now. That's it. Pointless or bring someone back to life. So I just don't want them to be used. I get that's the entire name of the show, Dragon Ball. But also it's like I don't like them anymore. I'm fine with the fighting, I'm fine with the characters. They can all do their stuff, have interest in villains, that type of stuff. But the Dragon Ball wishes are just Overall, pointless now. Deaths yeah. don't matter. I mean, I was I was okay with the Seventeen's uh, wish though. Um, like, I think I think that was the only one where I was like, I was I was fine with it because he was just basically saying that basically don't ruin the entire universe. Like, it was it was a selfless act. Yeah. Um, but that but technically everybody wasn't dead. Mm. Um, for the most part, mm. like that. Was an expectation within the arc from Zeno, so I was okay with that. But prior to that, I know exactly what you mean. That yeah, it's like boo blew up the world, so bring everyone back to life. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's no consequences anymore because of the Dragon Balls, even with death, which is why the first time it was used to bring Krillin back to life after he was killed by Tambourine, I was like, all right, that's that's cool, I guess. Krillin's not dead; he's back. That's good because Krillin was. A second, de- well, he was the second main character behind Goku at this point, um, and that's fine for a one-time thing, which is why there should be a limit on bringing people back to life. But there isn't, and it's like, okay, well, now deaths don't matter at all then. But yeah, now a- every time someone dies, it's like ah, they'll come back. Don't worry about it. Which yeah, there's no consequence, and they kind of put themselves in a hole because 
they're not going to change it now. There is no benefit or reason to change how the Dragon Balls work now. So deaths are always not going to mean anything anymore. They need to kill them, they. Oh, I imagine. They need to kill them, they, and the angels would have to take away the Super Dragon Balls. Yeah. But then, they, they, I, need to, they need to kill Dende, um, or make him ill, or something like that, where mm. his he was he'd be sorely weakened. So like he would maybe his power would only because he's only I think the dragons are only as the wishes are only as powerful as like the the user mm. creator. So you you weaken Dende, for instance, he becomes ill or something. So he can only do he can't he can't do as much. So his Shenron is weaker. So he can only do like one revive again. Mm. So that brings consequences. And then they're like, oh, but we'll use the super Dragon Balls. And which is like, actually, hold on. Zeno's now said since the tournament of power. No. Well, <laughs> yeah. But the Grand Minister, like, like he let you all come back after the seventeen wish, but. Things have got to change. Mm. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because they, they didn't show the collection of the Super Dragon Balls either. They were just all together from the start. Um, yeah. I wonder how that works. They didn't really explain, is there a cooldown time on the Super Dragon Balls? Do they freeze out like the normal ones? Or how, how do they disperse? Do they disperse? Are they all just constantly together and just ready to make a wish at any time? Um, maybe using that wish to revive all of the universes has put the Super Dragon Balls out of action for 10 years or something because since they're so powerful maybe it's an even bigger cooldown period or something who knows they didn't really yeah. explain anything about that like the power of the wish affects how long it takes to come back yeah they could use that as well yeah. um, that would be a good idea and then they'd say like okay so it's going to take over a hundred years, but mm. that would be fine because all of our characters would be dead by then. Yeah. Or, or at least the length of the show, mm. that you could ignore it. It's what so it would be a plot device that would no longer be part of the story. Would it? Or would everyone just start eating Roshi's special flower thing? <laughs> but it would last. Yeah, it would last for at least the length of the show. Yeah. yeah. So, because obviously your scenes can live longer than mm. humans, but. They would last the length of at least the show before the show ended. Mm. Um, so they would just be a plot device that could be forgotten about, and then you could just do whatever you want to weaken Dende. Yeah, because I don't think. Do yeah, I don't think they should get rid of the Dragon Balls because that is the name of the show after all. But no, I'm just saying weaken them. Um, yeah. Um, so that there are consequences. Yeah, it's this should be anyway. But. This I don't know. I don't know. As long as Bulma doesn't get her hands on them that many times. Um, because, yeah, like, normal... Banned. <laughs> Obviously, normal Earth people are never going to grant a wish, which is fine because no one knows about them or what, what, how powerful they are. Yeah. Like, uh, there has obviously been times in the show where people have found a Dragon Ball because, obviously, when they disperse, they land in random places across the Earth. And you see Goku retrieve them from these little, little villages and stuff. Well, especially in Dragon Ball, at least anyway. Original Dragon Ball. So people know of the Dragon Balls, but they have no idea what they do or how to grant a wish or anything like that. Um, so no one else is going to use them ever. It's always just going to be the main team, you know? Um, so yeah. But out of everyone, Bulma is the one who abuses them. You know, like you don't see Goku saying, oh yeah, I want to wish to be stronger just because nothing's happening right now. So, you know, Shenron, just give me a bit more power, maybe? No, I, yeah. It's fine. Things will be fine for a year. I can use them for a bit more power. You know, that type of stuff, you know. Or, I want my own private gym. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Vegeta could ask for that or something, you know. Vegeta's basically got as much access to Bulmas and she's the one that collects them, so you know, he could ask for something. A training partner that's you know, better than Goku or something like that. Who knows? No, he'd rather just beat down than Goku, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think 
Keep the Dragon Balls away from Bulma. Don't let her make any more pointless wishes. Ban them. Just absolutely ban them from her. <laughs> yeah, and for the future Dragon Ball, let's, you know, make wishes a bit more unique. Tired of them being used for deaths. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit frivolous at the minute. Yeah. Take them away. Let's have a, a good reason to use the Dragon Balls. But I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, apart from like solve world hunger, that type of stuff. But apart from that, I can't really think of something that would benefit the dragon team since they're the ones who always use it for their benefit, I guess. Or the world's benefit to save lives, but you know. It just needs to I think the scale the um the scale of things needs to change. It's mm. like when Namek got blew up and stuff like that and when they brought everybody back, it's the scale of things would have to change. Rather yeah. than just being back at a friend. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. All we can say is we'll see based on what the manga does and what any future installments of the anime does, or if they're even used in superhero film. Who knows? 